All children deserve to be in childcare facilities that provide the love and the care they need to be safe and to grow up healthy, confident, and ready to learn. This training video is designed to help you develop the skills necessary to monitor the state licensed childcare centers that you use in your child care development fund program, as well as your tribe's CCDF child care centers. You will want these centers to give children the love and the care they need to grow into healthy and confident children, and we want to make sure that those centers meet standards for good, safe, and nurturing care. As you and others monitor child care centers, you want to make sure you know the tribal child care health and safety standards and CCDF standards that apply. You may elect to use your own tribal health and safety standards or adopt your state's child care licensing standards. You need to know the standards, what they mean, and how you determine if the providers are in compliance. It is important to use the checklist that aligns with the standards you will be using during the monitoring visit. Now let's get started. Before you make a visit to a center, you need to review the center's file. Look at the time of the last visit, review the areas of non-compliance and any plans of correction, check the list of staff members and confirm they have acceptable criminal background checks on file. Look at the ages of the children that are normally cared for at the center so you can prepare appropriate technical assistance material to give to the center director. Remember to never go empty handed. When I walk into a facility, I usually um, I have to ring a doorbell or you know knock on the door or we have our codes. They have a code that we can walk in um, and the front desk is usually there um, telling them where I'm from and I do wear a badge you know, has this on it, with my name and stuff on it, and I sign in um, right there at the front desk. You may choose to start your visit in the office of the center you are monitoring. However, because of a high chance of rain, our visit starts outside. Well-maintained fencing needs to be in place to protect children while playing outdoors. Here, we see the monitor checking for sharp edges along areas of the fence and pointing out concerns to the director. She is careful to check the entire fence line. This is another um, play structure or swings. And, and another, this is a... The landing pad. Yeah, the landing pad, and it looks like it's the all-weather grass. Correct. So this is, a different, this is a different surface. And you want to make sure that the swings are um, secure up here. Having adequate protective surface covering and other impact absorbing material are critical on the playground. Always check that the S hooks or other fasteners are closed. Notice the lightweight rubber swing seats, which are safer than rigid seats. Dang, and it's off. It's pretty much intact right there. But the kids don't get splinters. Here we see a trike path with high grass and weeds surrounding it. Mowing schedule as far as, I know we've had a lot of rain, but how, do, you know, how often do you guys? Um, all of our yards are mowed and weeded once a week. And let's go over here to our house. Look in here. We are experiencing a bird problem at this time. Okay. We have birds who are wanting to nest, so we have, um, blocked the children from coming in here okay. because the birds are swooping and, and um, kind of terrorizing the children. I see. <laughs> uh, so we have blocked this from play at this time Okay. Um, and we are getting it cleaned up. Conditions change in the outdoor play area on a daily basis. Ensure the equipment is checked daily. Okay. This is so for infants and ones you still have your climbers and it is not bolted down so this is movable too. Right? Right. Okay. And since it's lower, you don't have to have the impact material on here. Oh, so this is bolted down. It, it's very heavy. heavy to move. <laughs> okay, good. Well, that's pretty sturdy. It's not this piece of equipment is for creative activities such as painting. Well, you can tell down here there's no screws or anything that's sharp edges or anything. A lot of it's round. Okay, and we have our sensory um, area over here, which is a sand, and it does stay covered. Mm -hmm. And then right here is our sandbox that 
during this time and just being out here you do cover it is staked down and it is cedar you stake down so they don't come off so it is covered for other um, wild animals that jump the fence mm -hmm. and then while you do have this covered before you come out um, after it's rained or anything you want to make sure you don't have any standing water the standing water will need to be dumped after the rain stops. And you want to make sure you take the tarp off and then in the evening time, put it back on just because of the wild animals could come in here because of the nature of the area. Does it work? Very. Yes, oh yeah, you does. have to wait for a minute. Yes. It's there it goes. On. Oh, well good. This is really nice. So the kids have These access. Are sanitized daily. Okay, sanitized daily. Yes. Great. And these are nice tables that they're not the wood, so you don't get any splinters or anything. So exactly. these are all. Notice how the monitor uses positive comments. Start our lunch or our snacks out here. Sometimes all three. Okay. Um, well, it is really, really nice. Yes. Make sure you empty those. Empty those. These chairs right here. And tell me about the hose situation as far as, is this, um, does this, is this stay right here? Do you put it up or? Um, or in the winter time, they are stored in our buildings. Okay. But in the summertime, we do leave them there because okay. we do outside water play. Okay. Um, we have sprinklers that we hook up and the kids can go in and out of the sprinklers. And then we have our water table that we bring outside and fill with it. Okay, good. So we just want to make sure that, and this is good that it has a, um, a hose holder mm -hmm. that it's all wind wound up together and it stays you know right here where the kids can't trip or anything mm -hmm. over so that's a good that's a good tool to have for your hose okay now we're going to go into our infant room be sure to check for compliance with the required child staff ratios in each room and we'll go in here and we'll check your this is where they change the diapers. You have your diaper procedures. Yes. Your gloves. You also have your bleach. Make sure the infants cannot reach bleach or other harmful substances. And here's your cover diaper pan. And I'm going to check for your hot water. Hand hygiene is the most important way to reduce the spread of infection. It is important that the monitor check for warm running water, soap, and towels. Check to make sure that hand washing instructions for staff members are posted. In addition to your monitoring role, you can also provide helpful information about the importance of hand washing, which will assist the director in putting good hand washing policies in place. Toilet. Make sure each toilet has the toilet paper. I'm going to make sure that the, the toilet does operate. Make sure everybody has the right man. That works. And then we have right here, let's look under the cabinets. And they are locked, so we're going to have it because she has the key right here. Since infants and toddlers cannot access this area unless being carried through, the key is kept in the lock for ease of access. That everything is stored and is not accessible to the children. We'll just lock it back. Well, make sure I lock that back. There we go. It is locked now. Okay, so let's go into the classroom and count kids. And they do have this area locked at the gate. So when they come back in, you can go ahead and lock it. So it stays locked. So and then as the teachers come in, hi. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. It is important for monitoring staff to interact with and acknowledge the children in the center. They're 
about this size just so we don't have any choking hazards or anything like that. Fruit under here. And the plates. And the furniture. Make sure it's in good repair. No rips or tears. And we want to notice we do have um, outlet covers on the, the plug-ins. You want to make sure that some of them are clear, so you want to make sure that they're, you want to make sure they are covered. Make sure we don't have any tears. These are sensory stimulation too. Oh, they're sensory? Oh, uh, these from textures. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. We have the different size of this. And then we have the corduroy. You just want to make sure your carpet and everything is intact. Looks like we have a little right here. Okay. That probably just needs to be cut off. Absolutely. Okay. Just got a little snag here. Let me get that. And the rug seems to be in pretty good shape here. It is clean with no snags. Oh. And then we have this area with your puzzles and your um, nesting toys. They're age appropriate for the ages. And your puzzles. They're not with little bitty pieces, so they're they're big pieces. So they're not. There's no choking hazard there. Prior to eating, the kids wash their hands right here. Soap dispensers should be checked every day to ensure they are filled. Am I the wrong? And then they'll wash it right here. Oh, here's some soap. Yeah. Okay. Kids will wash right here, and sometimes by using some of these. Um, automatic um, soap dispensers. Your batteries do go, so you want to make sure that you do have a portable um, soap. Right here, they have their own individual mat that nothing's touching, so that's a good... Um, this is nice that they have their own individual space. Each child should have their own storage space for their personal items. More cubbies for their shoes and stuff. That's good. It's not touching anybody else's. We have some more cots, blankets. And now it looks like the children are in for a treat. Note how the staff and children are interacting while preparing for their buggy ride. Okay, okay, we're just gonna sit right here. <laughs> we're just gonna sit right here. Oh, you're okay, you're okay. He's nice, he's nice, he's not gonna bite. So with you guys' artwork, you just kind of spread it around the room? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. <laughs> you ready to put your shoes on? Yeah. Note how the monitor asks questions of the staff as well as observing good supervision. Shoes on the right feet. There we go. We're ready to go. You going to go see Miss Lori Lou? Come here, Pepe. So when you guys go on a buggy ride, where do you uh, normally go? Um, it's pretty... We got... Like outside. Uh -huh. So when we have the weather we have, we you just guys go stay in the hallway. Go around the center. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, good job. Ready? The buggy. On rainy days in child care facilities, you often have to adapt and find new activities for the children to engage in. Oh, man, are you going to go on a ride? So, yeah. And you're getting all buckled up. The monitor is observing positive interaction between the staff and children as well as checking the condition of the equipment being used. We have the buckles. Ready? I'm gonna sit by Kendon. Everybody has car seats. It is Kendon. pretty sturdy. While the children are on the buggy ride, we will be taking a look at the nap time area. Do you guys wash the sheets daily or as needed? Weekly. weekly, not unless they get some. Needed. Yeah, as needed. If they, okay. some of them will be washed daily, but. If you are present while the children are napping, check for proper spacing and lighting and adequate adult supervision during nap time. And a lot of times they bring their own yeah. blanket. Yeah, this okay. is, uh -huh. she's brought this one from home. Okay. And they know which blankets. Your mat is covered in a sheet, a clean sheet, and you have a blanket. Here. Check to see that each child has an assigned mat and that they are properly spaced. So, what have y'all been doing today? If they have an all-day program for your school age, 
You have cots and they are labeled. Now let's take a look at the kitchen. Although sanitarians from environmental health agencies and your state's child care food program generally check kitchens in child care centers, there are areas that monitors should look at as well. I'm a Cherokee Nation. I'm just doing a visit. So we're just going to look around at your um, kitchen. Make sure that they are covered. Um, trash cans, there's no, nothing um, that's not covered because you have your food and stuff in here. Things covered. You have your, um, where they do the dishes, or things sanitized. Even though we have the digital thermometer up here, like we saw in the beginning, they do put a regular thermometer in here. No matter how large or small the kitchen is, it is important for the kitchen to be clean and sanitary. Now we will move into the food storage area. And lock. And you come up here to make sure that everything is clean. And you also you do check underneath these um, racks. And one reason because you are storing food in here to make sure we don't have any um, rodents or any anything you do sweep on this make sure you don't have any um, food that's dropped or anything and this looks like it is very well maintained always check for hot water at hand washing stations and here's your paper towel and here again is in our hand washing area is your hand washing poster And over here, since it is the kitchen, you have your fire extinguisher. Check fire extinguishers for current inspection tags. Check your microwave. You, you want to make sure, too, that you do check your microwave. Make sure it is clean. This is what they do to bring you to the classroom. Um, their food. Mm -hmm. Vegetable. So we're having green beans. We have green beans, applesauce. Okay. sauce what else spaghetti with meat sauce during mealtime it is important to observe the food being served and check the menu to verify that the food being served is scheduled on the menu and it does show today for Thursday you have spaghetti garlic cheese biscuits cream beans applesauce and milk <laughs> check to make sure the children and staff wash their hands before and after mealtime Being able to observe lunchtime with the children and staff will give the monitor a better picture of what occurs during each mealtime. Trade me? Thank you. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yum. Good job. Yum. <laughs> now we move into the combined preschool and school age room. If the director is available, it is always beneficial to be accompanied by the director during the walkthrough. This interaction will strengthen the relationship between monitor and director. Again, we have, we always check the temperature. And this is a, a big climbing apparatus and climbing and you want to make sure and you can already see that a lot of the hardware, it's all secure and sturdy. On large indoor play structures, you must check to ensure they are sturdy and safe. While not always required, carpet under a large indoor structure adds protection in the event of a child falling off. It's all secure. Mm -hmm. So you have um, age appropriate, since this is like your school age slash preschool, they have books, age appropriate books, you got your pillows, they are in good shape, over right here, you have some more books, but since it is like preschool slash school age, you have this side, this side is more age appropriate for your preschool, okay. and then over here looks like our dramatic play, over here, Obviously make sure you check in all of the cabinets, make sure they do have equipment and plenty of it. <laughs> Little microwave pretend. 
and that's you do want to make sure that you open all the make sure you open all of the cabinets to make sure that everything's intact like this right here I'm missing this this the screw is right here so it looks like it just came undone um, right here but that's why you want to make sure you open all the cabinets and we'll give this to the teachers and it looks like it just needs to be screwed right back in another these mirrors they're all shatterproof make sure that and they secure it on the wall really good what are we going to see? Um, right here. One thing that I will tell you that you, you know, we talked to the teacher about is this right here is an exit. And you want to make sure this area in from here to here, it is clear of any equipment or anything that we have. So like this, we need to move this. You had a handle right here. That was, it looks like the screw just came out. Okay. So, might want to have yes. this. Would you like um, to tell? That just screw back in. Go ahead and take that other one out too. Okay. And just take the handle off until so we can get maintenance too. Okay. Yeah, that one. And then the other part is we'll go over here to the exit door. Okay. Just want to make sure that when the kids are here in this, um, in this area right here, mm -hmm. that this exit stays open is open so if they need to move this it can be moved when areas of non-compliance are corrected during the visit you may acknowledge this on your visit checklist sure. More clutter. okay, okay. Yeah. we can do you can move that now. yeah you can go ahead let's go ahead and move it while we're in, during the visit right there we'll just turn it around this way right and, and I'll go ahead with your um, the closed area you can probably fit in that little area right there. <laughs> and what we'll put on here, it, it will still be in compliance, but we'll put um, the correction. It was corrected during visit. Okay. Me being a center director um, prior to this job, um, it does help me know that if the lunch is not cleaned up, and they're tending to the kids. I do know that they're going to come back. You know that things don't always run like it, like the calendar says. I do know that you know this goes here. They have to go accordingly to what the kids are doing. You know how they're feeling, how the staff, what staff you do have, what staff you don't have, who calls in, who doesn't. Um, I do see that, but I do see too on the other side of it, it can be done. Now we'll check the postings. Make sure to check licenses and evacuation plans as well as other postings required by your tribe or state. And but this is our office area that all you have to make sure all you check all your postings. So they not they might not be all in one area like when we first came in. Um, it's going to be you just ask the director where uh, the certain um, postings are. Fire drill and the tornado drills that is documented. Um, how many kids you can have? Uh, toddler daily schedule and then you have your lesson plan that they fill out their time in and who send them in these postings are generally found in the individual classrooms daily attendance charts for children and staff are critical particularly in an emergency situation okay say so we're just completing the visit here so I'm just going to kind of go over um, the checklist in the summary, sure. what we have. Um, we're going to go ahead and go over that we did have some non compliances okay. that we had, um, but you did re you did correct it. Um, one was the e the exits. Right. We had some equipment and um, the basketball goal. Correct. Um, that was blocking the exit, and I did put in here also um, in the it was in the gross. Um, big gross motor room mm -hmm. and that I did um, document that you did remove um, the equipment and the basketball go away from the exit mm -hmm. and um, what else as far as 
how we're going to prevent that from happening again. Um, I will be going over with my staff in that, that particular room um, that we need to keep all those exits open. Um, that is new staff that just started two days ago. Okay. So um, they're not quite as familiar as some of the, the more seasoned staff, so okay. I will go over with them. Okay, and when um, do you anticipate uh, going over that? Today. Two. Absolutely. This is, these are, um, if you have some situations with some kids or mm -hmm. staff, over here some information from the warm line. And this is also just by looking at your center, you are a two-star center, mm -hmm. and um, we do like, here's um, for the stars, to maybe okay. consider that if um, the Cherokee Nation or the center has any plans of being a three-star. Okay. Just by looking at the center, it looks like you guys are heading in that direction. All right, thank so you. So here's that information right there. A um, so couple more questions. Do you have any, do you need anything from us? Um, not at this time. No? Okay. I perceive that we go um, into the centers and we go to help. When a licensing worker comes through our front door, um, we just continue our business. Um, they are just an extension of the care and the safety that we provide for the children in our center. And they're just another set of eyes and ears that we utilize um, when they come through. They look at things that we may oftentimes miss and they bring to us lots of knowledge, lots of um, good information. And you know, they're, they're also a good reminder for me. It's like, uh, hello Sandy, you need to get this done. New monitors may feel a little nervous about inspecting childcare centers. The following interviews share advice for a new monitor. The advice that I would give to a new licensing person who was entering our facility for the first time would be to come in in a very helpful mode, um, you know, talk to the director, uh, observe all of the classrooms, observe the teaching staff, um, just get a, a true feeling for that center before you start going through and um, just be very respectful speak to our children. We've had people that don't and you know they're there too and that's what they're for so to me I think that's one of the biggest things is to be sure and you know at least acknowledge them and um, just make sure everything's safe and you know kind of talk to us and you know they don't have to tell us exactly what we're doing but or what they're doing but just to know you know that they're there. Let us know that they're there once mm -hmm. they get into the room so, and we'll just go on about our business. If your tribe makes payment for children at a state licensed center, you may also want to visit the center to confirm compliance with standards and to observe the care. Our monitor shares some thoughts about following behind state licensing workers. Don't feel intimidated by um, the state agency that you're going to follow behind because um, you're just more you're just as important as they are and just be very confident um, when you go and be confident to write up the non-compliances in the in the plan in the your plan of correction what helps me um, as far as ha not getting intimidated by the state agency is educating myself with the requirements keeping, keeping up with the um, the new requirements um, and basically communicating with the state agency and those workers and working closely with them. This video is intended to be a snapshot of what you might find as you monitor your center providers. While the information presented is comprehensive, not every situation you might encounter can be addressed. You need to be ready for anything and apply the skills you have learned and use the information presented to meet each new challenge. The role you have is important and we hope this video along with the Center Monitoring Training Guide will give you the support you need to protect the health and safety of the children in the child care centers you monitor.